So let's launch into some updates on education enrollment. So in the UNC Board of Governors meeting uh, last week, uh, we presented to the Ed Planning Committee um, the, the enrollment report for the UNC system. And as a part of that, uh, we touched on the highlights of education degree enrollment within the UNC system. If you recall from last year's data, uh, we reported on <coughs> significant declines in education enrollments in UNC's 15 schools, colleges, and departments of education. So each year, uh, we, we do what we call fall headcount enrollment. And when we look at enrollments in our 15 colleges of education, um, we see at the undergraduate and graduate level, bachelor's and master's level, that education program enrollments have decreased by 30% since 2010. Last year when I shared that information with you, since 2010 we had declined by uh, just over 27%. When we look at the fall headcount data from fall 2014 to fall of this year, 2015, or this academic year, uh, we see that enrollments have declined by just over 3%. Um, again, last year when we reported on fall 2013 to fall 2014, the declines were just over 12% in education. So we see that the declines have slowed down um, in, in enrollment in education a little bit, or the drop in decline uh, has slowed to 3.4%. Um, so that's good news, but overall when we see a decline of 30% since 2010, that's highly concerning, particularly when we think about teacher supply and demand and the shortage of teachers, particularly in high need licensure areas, math, science, middle grades, special education, and other areas that we are beginning to hear from school principals and superintendents that are of, of growing need, uh, elementary education. For the first time in a very long period of time, we're beginning to hear from school districts that they're having a hard time recruiting um, and elementary ed teachers into their programs. Um, so we can talk a little bit about this uh, trend uh, data and I'll answer any questions that you may have, but let me make a few points about national trends in education enrollments at four-year public institutions of higher education. So I had our institutional research office uh, pull for us data from um, IPEDS, which is the national data source um, that institutions of higher education report to. It's not exact in terms of the year of comparison, so I'll say that up front, but it's the best national measure that we have. Uh, we do see a continuing decline at the national level in four-year public institutions of higher education. Those declines have slowed as well, um, so they aren't quite as dramatic as what we've seen um, in the trends. But when I look at North Carolina's constant supply sources of teachers, out-of-state prepared teachers are North Carolina's second largest supply source of teachers. And when I look at the top states that we draw teachers from to teach in North Carolina, I see more significant, significant declines in those states. So I don't think that the slowing nationally overall in declines, um, I think we still have reason to be concerned. So when school districts are hiring um, teachers to fill their employment um, uh, of teachers in their districts, they're going to pull from public and private institutions of higher education in North Carolina. They're going to pull from out of state, they pull from alternative entry, and we've identified all those supply sources. And if in state enrollments are drying up and out of state enrollments are drying up in those states that supply us with teachers, then we're going to be turning to those other supply sources. And we do have um, impact data in aggregate on those supply sources and they don't always point to um, perhaps the best decisions of employment. We, we need to increase our enrollment and increase our productivity of new initially licensed teachers in public and private institutions in North Carolina um, to help with the supply and demand trends. And I'm going to tell you about some of the things that we're doing uh, to turn those enrollment declines around at UNC institutions, but let me pause and see if there are any questions that you may have. Um, about the enrollment data. Kind of. Yes. Ms. Willoughby? 
obviously disturbing trends, and especially in a state whose population is increasing. Um, I think, you know, I don't want to neglect that factor. I don't seem to have this presentation. Uh, I provided it to Ms. West early this morning, so she didn't have it. But we will have it at some point. That's great. I don't have to have it now, but I'd, I'd love to have these numbers. And, you know, I think I'll be interested to see the rest of your presentation, but I just think when we provide these numbers showing the trends in population growth is another important factor because our schools are growing up. Uh, I don't know how many thousands of children this year. We have more than we had last year. Um, so that's another part of this trend that I think we need to make sure we juxtapose with these numbers. It's an, import, it's an important point. Um, I'm very concerned, even with the 3.4% decline, obviously the 30% decline over 10 years um, is um, uh, very concerning, but when we think 12 months out, 24 months out, the challenge in hiring teachers for our public schools across the state is going to increase, um, and we're going to hear more about higher need licensure areas, and the issue of distribution. Um, of getting those math teachers, science teachers, special education teachers um, to rural parts of the state or harder to staff schools will be um, uh, even more challenging. Mr. Collins, one of the things that I've had a pet peeve about for some time is primarily related to the fact that my son is a student athlete at the University of North Carolina, and that is how few student athletes are going in the teaching profession and teaching education. And I think that we're making a big mistake by not um, encouraging that. I don't know a high school in North Carolina that would love to have a form of uh, college athlete on their staff. And I've seen a, um, a summary at some point of uh, the numbers. And I, I, I think I would, I would recommend maybe East Carolina that maybe has more. Most of, most of the public schools that offer education have very few uh, student athletes. And I would like for you guys to take a look at that and figure out what can be done to encourage them. Yeah, I have not pulled the latest data on, um, on that, so I don't have the latest figure, but you raise a, um, an interesting question, and I will pull that data and take a look at it. I'm glad to share that back with the board. I will say that when we look at declines in enrollment in education, it's not in one, any one particular licensure area. We really see a decline across the spectrum of many licensure areas. So that's been a question that's, that's come up. And I think your question also um, moves us into the next slide, what the university is doing to increase um, uh, or to turn around the enrollment decline. So let me uh, move uh, this Davis. back. Ms. Chapman, I always appreciate the data you bring and the insights. Um, and this may be in your report, so if it is. But um, it's nice to look in the rearview mirror. I'd much rather look ahead. Um, would it be possible to, for you to develop a projection? If the current trends continue. Where are we going to be in five years, ten years? That would be most insightful. Right. Um, Mr. Davis, that's a great question, um, and we should have that. We don't have projections for what this what this is going to mean. We do have um, we do have overall projections of supply and demand. Um, but we've not really pulled that together in a way um, that policymakers, um, such as yourself and others, um, can begin to look at this and prepare for, uh, or better prepare for, the circumstance um, that we'll be in. So I'd be happy to follow up with um, staff on the Department of Public Instruction and um, work on that. That'd be great. Thanks. Lisa. Yes, sir. Yeah. You have uh, mentioned several times the whole supply demand uh, issue, and, uh, and I think and I think we're having a little bit of this in the state. But I think I think we've got to have a conversation in the state that creates the long line to get in our schools of education. It ought to be as it ought to be as competitive as to get into law school or med school. And we've got to do that. We have a conversation coming later today around uh, budget uh, requests around teacher retention and recruiting. And some of those items are in there. Uh, a number of those things in there. Professional development, mentoring, uh, uh, 
we ought to be looking and having the conversation around, uh, and I don't care what we call it, the, the Teaching Fellows Program, the Center for uh, uh, Advancement of Teaching, uh, but, uh, and, and really the quantum leap in salaries is a part of that conversation that, uh, that, we, that we've got to have. But I, I just think we've got to create the demand because you can talk, you're going to tell us what you're doing, but uh, we don't, you, don't have, you don't have many tools. You know, I have a lot of ideas, and I don't think this is the place for all these ideas, but I do believe that, that uh, even, even an, in, an induction process that begins from the day a, a student enters the School of Education until about three years after they've been teaching, and, and, and perhaps stipends for the clinical experience. If we're gonna, if we're gonna ask a, a, a student teacher to be a, a, a teacher, uh, we can't ask them to work at McDonald's or Belk's all weekend and then uh, and, and do that. So although we're asking teachers to do that too, uh, but uh, I, I just I think that we have to have this conversation that creates the demand, and that yes, that is associated with salaries. It's associated with respect. It's associated with professional development and uh, and some attention to that profession that we've all got to put our shoulders together and figure out comprehensive package that uh, puts North Carolina ahead of every state in America. If we do that, the return on that uh, investment will be great. Yeah. And so I, I guess is that really leads into your next slide. Yes, it, it does. It's a great um, prelude to um, my next slide, some of the things that we're doing, but I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, we do need to bring to bear all of the great innovations that we can think of working together on these issues. Some of the things that you've mentioned we are um, beginning to address, but we can do. We need to do far more um, to uh, work on this issue of supply and demand in our state. Chair, so, Chairman, Hill, if I may ask before she goes forward, will the uh, data that you provide to us also be provided to the legislators? Because some of the uh, situations that impact uh, student enrollment uh, depends on legislative action. And if we don't have that information provided to the legislators and if that is not utilized in helping us to move public education forward, all of the discussions at this table are from our Absolutely, Dr. Pitch. Um, the data will uh, are have been provided, but what I'm going to show you in just a moment um, is an online website where we are making this data, uh, data transparently available to the public. So, okay, with that, um, four things that we are uh, current. We're doing many more than the four things I'll highlight today, but I think the four critical things that we need to know about today um, that the university is doing in response to the declining enrollment. Uh, the first is uh, building campus-based enrollment growth plans. So projecting out goals. Okay. Um, so projecting out goals for increasing the productivity of new initially licensed teachers in our schools of education. Not just overall, but we're taking a look at math, science, middle grade, special education, undergraduate programs graduate level initial licensure program, as well as alternative licensure uh, programs that are delivered through our colleges of education. Um, so each of our campuses um, are finalizing these enrollment growth plans and working toward meeting those increased goals uh, of productivity. We've coupled that with some market research that we've produced to help guide our recruitment efforts in the state. We've looked at six um, segments in the market um, that are um, recruits, potential recruits um, to the profession. So uh, high school juniors and seniors um, in our schools across the state, mid-career professionals that might consider teaching as a profession, community college students um, that are likely to transfer to UNC institutions and take their last two years and uh, complete in an education program undecided majors uh, on UNC campuses, they're in our backyard. If they haven't decided their majors, we can tell them more about um, the opportunities uh, to enter into the teaching profession, uh, as well as high school counselors and military personnel and their spouses. We're using that research to inform the third bullet on the slide, and that is uh, the development of campus-based recruitment plans. So these plans are helping to guide 
us in meeting those enrollment growth goals, and the market research is telling us more about how to do that with precision. Um, and then the fourth bullet, um, we have uh, just, uh, in, within the last month, launched a new recruitment website, Teach Now for North Carolina, and Dr. Atkinson has um, provided us for some comment in a release, I think, that will go out um, later this week. Um, TeachNow.NorthCarolina.edu is a website that is responsive to the teacher recruiter's request on our campuses. You're right, Mr. McDivitt, they don't have uh, the tools and resources that they've had in the past to recruit into the profession. So they need, we need to think of innovative ways and tools that we can begin uh, to recruit individuals into our colleges of education. The Teach Now North Carolina website is one tool and resource that we've developed in response to our recruiters' uh, request on our campuses. That Teach Now is uh, administered by you, uh, by the university system? By the university system. It's actually developed uh, in collaboration with the teacher recruiters on UNC <coughs> campuses across the system. We also got input, uh, obviously, from our colleagues at the Department of Public Construction and uh, many others across the state.